<laughs> Mark, I'd like to pick on something you said. I mean, you, you briefly mentioned the, the, the new president south of our border. Um, uh, I'm sure that lots of people here are wondering, in light of, uh, of the, the U.S. election, uh, I, I know myself, I'd, like to, I'd be interested in hearing your, your views on what can cities do faced with, um, with someone who does, thinks that climate change is a, is a hoax, uh, nominated uh, Scott Pruitt, uh, climate skeptic, as the head of the EPA, uh, and want, wants basically to dismantle everything the U.S. Has, has done in terms of climate change, both domestically but also uh, internationally, what, what can cities do about this? Well, I mean, I think there's, there's no doubt. Unfortunately, President Trump's election is a, a huge step backwards for international action on, on climate change, for the world's largest economy to be essentially now taking itself out of international leadership on a, an existential crisis that needs extreme action in, in a very short period of time. It creates a, a, a vacuum. But I think the, the, the positive thing is, as, as the mayor says, part of the reason actually that the governments of the world felt confident enough to come together to make an agreement on climate change after 20 years of failing to do so was because there was such a positive surge upwards from the non-state actors mm -hmm. uh, that were already on their own taking action towards a low carbon future because it makes sense because the most successful cities of the future will be the first ones that get on that low carbon development path and what, what we've analyzed in, in C40 is if we, we've, we've done uh, an analysis of all, of all of the member cities to work out what would they need to do to make a contribution consistent with the Paris Agreement target of constraining global temperature rise to just 1.5 degrees. And when you, you look at that, if, C40, if all of the cities in the world with a population over 100,000 were to follow the, the path that C40 cities have now agreed to, it would deliver 40% of the target towards that, that Paris Agreement target without federal government having to, had to lead any of that action. And even within the United States, although it's, it's pretty tough, a third of, of the US commitment under the Paris Agreement can be delivered by city action, and you can just about make up, add up how America can still make good on that commitment without the federal government d doing anything. And we're really seeing tremendous willingness from, from the mayors in the US to take that leadership and stand together to make, to make sure that America does deliver on its commitment. Let's talk about my favorite sports, politics. <laughs> <laughs> Gather, we have all the stakeholders together, we have uh, the experts, but now with that urban diplomacy, you are witnessing a formidable, you know, uh, counter uh, effort from the mayors. Sanctuary city, we're talking, uh, and trust me, Energy East will never pass through Montreal. Uh, all of, the, of my brothers and sisters from the Alliance of the Great Lakes and uh, the uh, St. Lawrence River that I chair, we all have a common agenda. That Think Global, Act Local is working. This is not a slogan. Every time that we want to make sure that uh, we protect uh, our goals and uh, protect our policies and protect our values, you have a formidable war room gathered together and pushing in the same way. 